Hello, I'm Pastor Barbara. I'd like to do a few videos on the subject of Christmas, and these are going to fall in two categories. Free, birth of Christ, the birth of Christ, and those things that happen after the birth of Christ. For those of my usual Bible study viewers, I'm finding this a little strange because, as you know, sometimes I take two, two and a half hours to explain something about the size of what I'm going to try to do now in just a few minutes. But I go verse by verse, word by word, comma by comma, and I feel that it helps us really understand the Word of God that way. But this is going to be a little quicker, so I don't feel terribly confident in this method of teaching, but we hope that it'll work out okay. Now, the, we could say many things that were prophesied in the Old Testament about the birth of Christ. But I'm going to limit uh, myself to one mention of the birth of Christ in the book of Malachi. The book of Malachi is the last book in the Protestant Old Testament. It was common in that time when people wanted to speak of the law to mention Moses. Moses said this or Moses did that. And they were referring to the law that God gave Moses. And it was common when they referred to prophets, uh, especially good and very effective prophets, as Elijah, since he was the greatest prophet of all. Now, Elijah never wrote a book. There were prophets like Jeremiah and Isaiah, and even prophets who wrote very little as Malachi. Malachi, the book of Malachi, only has four chapters, and it's a minor prophecy. But he speaks of something which is going to happen as the New Testament opens. Let me read what he says. In Malachi chapter 4, verse 4, he says, Remember the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded him in Horeb for Israel, with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet. Well, Elijah the prophet, you know, and I know was taken up into heaven in a chariot of fire. But he said, I'm going to send you Elijah, or I'm going to send you a great prophet. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dead, dreadful day of the Lord, which incidentally hasn't happened yet. And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. So the last thing the Old Testament tells us is that God is going to send us a great preacher. And the New Testament, the Gospels, open with that. Now I'm going to skip for the time being Matthew and Mark, and I'm going to go to Luke, chapter 1. Verse 5 of chapter 1 talks about a priest ministering in the temple, and this priest's name is Zechariah. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zechariah of the division of Abijah. His wife was the do of the daughters of Aaron, meaning that she was of a priestly line. Her name was Elizabeth, and they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord. So it was that while he was serving as a priest in the order of his division, now these priests ministered in the temple for a short while, and then they went home with their families, and then they would come back, sort of like our firemen that are on 24, 48 hours, and then they're off 24, 48. Well, they were, of course, their period of time was longer. But they didn't minister all year long in the temple. They were there for a division or for a time, and then they went back. It was his time to minister, and uh, he was, according to the custom of the priesthood, his lot fell to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. Just in front of the veil of the temple, the one that was rent in two at the death of Christ, was a small altar, golden altar of incense, which represented the prayers of the saints. And he was ministering there at this altar. And the people were outside of the temple. And an angel of the Lord, verse 11, appeared to him standing at the right side of the altar of incense. 
And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled. And fear fell upon him. Well, I'd be scared too if all of a sudden there was an angel. But the angel said, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear a son. Now he doubted that. And because he doubted that his wife would have a child, because she was old and she was barren, because of that, the angel said, but you're going to be mute. You're going to be unable to speak until the day that this child is born. And when he's born, you're going to name him John. And he said in verse 16, and he will turn the hearts of many of the children of God to, to the Lord our God, he will go before him, capital H, Jesus, in the spirit and power of Elijah. See how this connects with what we read in Malachi in the Old Testament? To turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedience to the wisdom of the just to make ready uh, a people prepared for the Lord. So we have already fulfilled at the beginning of the New Testament, what was prophesied. Now, when he was finished with his time that he served, Zacharias went home, and he knew his wife, and she became with child. For some reason or another, she was embarrassed, whether it was because she was barren or she was old, and she sort of kept to herself. Now, six months after Gabriel comes and speaks to Zechariah, Gabriel also goes and speaks to somebody else about the birth of a son. In the same chapter, Luke 1, verse 26, now in the sixth month, six months had gone by, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city in Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. Joseph, as we're going to learn later, his wife Mary, came from the kingly line of David. Joseph came from the line of David's son Solomon, and Mary came, to fulfill the same prophecy, from the kingly line of David's son, another son by the name of Nathan. Now, she was betrothed to a man of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Bear, was Mary. And having come in, the angel said, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled. And she said, and the angel said, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you've been found favored. You found favor with God, and behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son. And you shall call his name Jesus, and he will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. So Messiah is going to come from the priestly line of Aaron, and from the royal line of King David. Now Mary said to the angel, now she's not showing doubt here, she's just showing innocence. Not the same doubt that Zechariah had. And she said, how can it be since I don't know a man? And the, and the angel answered and said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. And therefore the Holy One that's to be born will be called the Son of God. Now, just in case you're having trouble believing Mary with God, nothing is impossible. For you have a cousin whose name is Elizabeth and she is elderly and she is in a family way. We're going to close this part and go to part two. Until then, God bless.